Welcome Cybertrack students, I'm your instructor. Today we're going to be talking about intro to cybersecurity. I'm going to be going over things like why cybersecurity is so interesting, why you might want to do cybersecurity for a job, what are the benefits of it, why is it such a high in demand field, different things like this. Also some intro topics to cybersecurity. Sometimes there's a very high barrier to entry with some of these technology fields and cybersecurity is no exception to that. So for cybersecurity a lot of people are intimidated with some of the core technologies or some of the concepts in it. They think, how can I be a hacker or how can I be a security analyst if I don't even know how to plug in a printer to my computer? So the goal with this channel is to really help everyone start from a foundation. I wanna start from zero and then get you to where you need to be so you can get that next cybersecurity job. You know, get your foot in the door. I'm also gonna be talking about resume writing, different advanced skill sets, how do you hack into a server, how do you prevent someone from doing that. I'm also going to be talking about networking, all these different things. Cybersecurity is such a broad topic. There's so much to cover and I think that's why it's so intimidating to some people. So let's go ahead and backtrack and let's start from the beginning. All right, so what is cybersecurity? Essentially cybersecurity, we're finding problems and then we're fixing the problems. Let's say we have a network of a hundred different computers at a company and this company they sell bread right and they have a website up. they have a hundred employees there but the problem with these computers is they haven't been updated in about two years so if you came in as a security analyst or a security consultant you find the problem you say you have a hundred computers that are outdated and then what's the problem what's the solution we tell them you need to update your computer to the latest version all 100 of them that's a very oversimplified example, but I hope it gets the point across. That's the main goal in cybersecurity. Kind of brings us to our next point here, the CIA triad. So with the CIA triad, we've got confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, these three things are gonna be the foundation of all cybersecurity. Without these three, you know, cybersecurity fails. So for confidentiality, we wanna make sure only people that should have access to things have access to those. So your laptop or your work computer, you don't want just anyone to have access to it. So one method for confidentiality is actually to implement a password on your computer. For availability, let's say you're trying to buy something from an online retailer and the website goes down. They have no availability, so you can't buy products. With availability, we need to make sure resources are available to different people. We need to make sure websites are up. We need to make sure people have access to the resources they need. And then that brings us to integrity. So integrity is making sure things aren't changed or spoofed or you know switched in transit. When you send a message to someone, a text message or an email, you wanna make sure that email is the same on the end or the receiver's end as it was when you sent it. So the integrity of the message can be checked using different tools. So these three topics encompass all of cybersecurity. That's the foundation. Everything is built upon this. If you wanna work for the government, if you wanna be a hacker, if you wanna be a pen tester, if you wanna be a blue teamer, right? All of these are just fancy names in cybersecurity. They're different jobs, but they all require a base knowledge of the CIA triad. So let's actually do a thought experiment here. Let's say you find a USB on the ground, right? USB is just a little thing that you can plug into your computer, you can store files on it. Let's say you find one in the parking lot. So what kind of threat could that pose to you or your company um, just in general, right? I want you to think of some ideas. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. So just off the top of my head, maybe there's some malware that's on it. If someone were to plug in that USB into a computer, maybe it runs some malware, and then it starts recording your keystrokes and then people can log into your bank account later. Or maybe it's a special software that can get your two-factor authentication codes. Something else we'll be talking about later. So as you're living your life and as you're going through your day-to-day, -day, I want you to be thinking about different examples about how could I make that more secure and how could I break into that, right? There's nothing wrong with thinking about how to break into something. I do it all the time. It's part of my job, it's actually what I do. So I'm a security consultant, my job is to find a problem and then I, then I offer the solution to the client. One example might be an ATM. One time I was given an ATM and I had to find out all the problems in the ATM, right? So you have to find out what's, what's wrong with the physical security, what's wrong with the operating system. You gotta find out what can I run on this? How do you get the money out of the ATM? 
Is there a way to break into the safe? Or do I need to do it through the computer? So a lot of research is done. Another thought experiment I want you to do, right? So let's say we're trying to break into a network. There's a website and there's a few employees at the company and they have a database and a server. So we could try to target the users, right? This is called social engineering. This is taking advantage of human weakness. So this is going up to the receptionist and saying, hey, I'm an engineer or I need to work in your network closet. I just got a call today. They said it's urgent. The receptionist hasn't heard about this, but it sounds urgent. The receptionist lets you in and then you start plugging stuff into the network and then you've compromised their network. Other types of social engineering attacks are phishing emails. I'm sure you've all gotten some sort of email saying a Nigerian prince is trying to you know, help you out, wants to give you a million dollars. That's a form of social engineering. It's trying to trick you into thinking a certain situation is real. And then on the technical side of things, we have all sorts of different attacks. We have injection attacks, right? We're putting malformed code into certain text inputs, and then we're trying to get the program to do something else. And we'll talk about this in way more detail later. I just wanna get your minds thinking about this. And then we have something called man in the middle attack. So man in the middle, essentially two people are trying to talk to each other, and then you're sitting right there in the middle, intercepting all that traffic. And then we have physical attacks. So physical attacks is uh, bypassing locks, badge readers, stealing laptops, trying to get stuff in a physical sense of things. So if you were to break into a data center, right, that's a physical attack. There's a saying in cybersecurity, if you can touch it, you can hack it. So preventing physical access to items is one of the first safeguards that you should be thinking about in cybersecurity. And then for the website, let's say we wanted to break into it. Let's say we found out someone's username and it was admin. We could try something like a brute force attack. These take a long time, but it is an option for breaking into something. So brute force attack, we'll be talking about all of these concepts later. Essentially, it's trying a lot of different passwords for a username over and over again. So if you knew the user was admin and you had a possible list of 10,000 usernames that you thought it could be, you try all 10,000 of those to get in. So that's a brute force attack. More often than not, there are better ways to get in. So we'll be talking about a lot of different concepts about how to prevent these attacks, how to actually break into these. We're gonna get on our computer, and as we go through these modules, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to perform these attacks. Also, if you're more interested in the business side of security, we're gonna be talking about some things like governance, risk, and compliance. So compliance, we're talking about you know, PCI. If you accept credit cards for your company, you need to be PCI compliant. If you accept medical records or if you store medical records, you need to be HIPAA compliant. There are different frameworks and different compliance uh, frameworks that you need to follow if you're doing certain things in cybersecurity. Also, I'm gonna be talking about things like writing your resume. We're gonna be doing things like networking with people. What are some good websites to research? Cybersecurity is always changing, so you gotta be on top of the news all the time. Something changes, a new vulnerability comes out, you gotta know these things. If you want a boring job, cybersecurity is not the place to be, because cybersecurity is always changing. In five years, the demand's just gonna keep going up. One great thing about the cybersecurity field is it's so high in demand that employers can't find enough people to fill those jobs. So there's an organization called ISC. They actually did a study that in 2020, which is right now, 1.5 million cybersecurity jobs would not be filled. So the demand for cybersecurity jobs is so high and employers are willing to pay more for these jobs. There just aren't enough people that are able to do it. It's a very high skilled job. There's a high barrier to entry. A lot of people are intimidated by it. Hopefully this channel is able to help you start where you need to be and then eventually get where you need to be so you can get that first cyber job. All sorts of great things here. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started and talk about some of these intro to cybersecurity topics.